Hey there everyone, I'm Patrick Ferguson with Skull Splitter Dice and today in this 5e guide we're going to be talking about the Genasi. Genasi are the elemental themed marvels of the D&D world. Utterly unique but essentially human, Genasi are misunderstood loners and brilliant stars. With Genasi you can make characters powered by the four elements and being one of the less well known races in the game I imagine there's a lot you can learn in today's video. Like a lot of races that we've covered on this series, Genasi don't really have a culture due to the fact that they're far too rare. Playing a Genasi is almost always going to mean that you're going to be one of a kind, a unique creation of your imagination with a strong elemental theme as a baseline. Every Genasi is unique, and you can literally come from anywhere. As a rule, genies aren't exactly the most dependable parents in the world and don't typically take any interest in their kids' lives. Most Genasi are born from a romance fitting of a Greek myth, often meaning that the material plane parent is left to take care of the half-elemental child. The elemental half usually provides some sort of physical indicator, and as a result, Genasi are often ridiculed by ignorant locals. How they take this adversity largely depends on their elemental type. Really, each distinct flavor of Genasi is unique enough to be their own race. So how should you build your Genasi's appearance? Well, Genasi have some of the most open-ended physical descriptions in the book, and you should feel free to take that wherever you'd like. Any configuration or theme of element plus person is acceptable, short of just making them out of the stuff. Air Genasi, for instance, tend to come in light blues and are surrounded by all sorts of cool wind effects. Also, they sometimes have crystal hair, which could be your thing. Earth Genasi, on the other hand, range from dirty around the edges to a polished gemstone look to a fully metal shining skin type of deal. You can have tiny crystals in your body, pebble texture skin, or any combination of rocky elements to kind of work with. Fire Genasi, perhaps quite obviously, have a bunch of red and orange skin tones as well as some ashen and black skin tones to work with. They're also almost always redheads and literally give off heat like a space heater. Water Genasi will typically have blue or green skin and will also usually have some sort of water effect going on around them, such as their hair flowing as though they were submerged. Do bear in mind that you are able to make your Genasi half any race that you'd like as long as you keep that genie element there. A lot of the art you've seen may suggest that they are only half human and that's definitely not the case. You can make them any race that you'd like. So what should you name your Genasi character? Well, since they don't have a culture all their own, you really don't have to stick to any naming conventions if you don't want to. If they're born of dwarves, give them a dwarven name. If they're born of elves, give them an elvish name, and so on and so forth. Some of them decide to make up their own name later in life that sort of leans into their elemental background a little bit. Something like Ember for a Fire Genasi or Riptide for a Water Genasi. Now let's get into some traits about the Genasi, starting with their ability score increase, which is a plus two to constitution. Great for really any class. And as for their age, Genasi mature at about the same rate as humans and live slightly longer at 120 years. As for their alignment, you can definitely pick whichever you'd like, depending on what kind of background you'd like to give them. However, since they're independent and self-reliant by nature, they tend to lean towards a neutral alignment. As for their size, they are medium and stand between 5 and 6 feet tall, yes, even if they're born from gnomes. And as for their speed, they have a base walking speed of 35 feet, which is better than most. And as for the languages that you can speak, read, and write in, that consists of common and primordial. Primordial is a guttural language filled with harsh syllables and hard consonants. Definitely one of the more interesting in the game, if you ask me. Now let's get into the sub-races, starting with the Air Genasi. Air Genasi are descended from the Jinn, who are probably the most archetypal genie out of all the genies. Jinn love life, good food, music, and have a long history of getting trapped in lamps and having to grant wishes. Air Genasi tend to have a lot of that wanderlust and an urge to seek out new places, along with a big dollop of hearty arrogance and no shortness of pride. Air Genasi have a real carefree charm to them and definitely appeal to a certain type of player. Air Genasi get an ability score increase of plus one to dexterity, meaning that they're really well suited to a dexterity based martial class, like a rogue with a bow or something like that. You also get an ability called Unending Breath, and this ability is deceptively good. You're able to hold your breath indefinitely as long as you're not incapacitated. Underwater, going through poison, you're able to hold your breath through a litany of situations and you can definitely see how this would be useful. You also get an ability called Mingle with the Wind, which essentially lets you cast a levitation spell once per long rest. At an early level, I don't think I have to tell a lot of you veteran players that a levitation spell is practically game-breaking. 
Moving on to the Earth Genasi, they're descended from the Dao, which is probably the least used of the genie family tree within D&D. Dao are greedy miners and slavers. They're self-centered and are usually only out to line their own pockets. They do have a sort of honor to them, though, where they will try to pay back the debt to those who have been kind to them in the past. Earth Genasi get an ability score increase of plus one to strength, which when mixed with that plus two to constitution, makes them really well suited to be something like a barbarian or a paladin. They also have an ability called Earthwalk, which allows them to move across difficult earth or stone without expending any extra movement. This ability is honestly pretty bad, and I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of groups have to tweak it a little bit in order to improve the result. And lastly, you also get Merge with Stone, which allows you to cast Pass without a trace once per long rest. It is what it is, which is a strangely positioned, if not slightly useful spell. Now moving on to the Fire Genasi, which I imagine a lot of you will be playing. Fire Genasi are descended from the Efreet, and are very commonly mistaken for devils. Perhaps it's well deserved, as they are often intelligent, red-skinned, horned, hot-tempered, and typically pretty evil. But they aren't too interested in wealth, instead they're interested in honor, or at least their strange, screwed up version of it. They get an ability score increase of plus one to intelligence, which when mixed with that constitution, makes them really well suited to be a sort of combat-oriented wizard. Fire Genasi also get dark vision, but they have a special version of dark vision where they see everything in shades of red. It certainly doesn't do anything but add flavor, but it is appreciated flavor nonetheless. As a Fire Genasi, you of course get Fire Resistance, which you're going to be very glad that you have, and you also have an ability called Reach to the Blaze. Once you reach 3rd level, you can cast the Burning Hand spell once per long rest. In later levels, you will probably forget that you even have this, but in early sections, you're going to be very glad that you have it. And now let's move on to the Water Genasi, who are all descended from the Marid. The Marid are arrogant, selfish, manipulative, and believe that they are pretty much superior to just about everything in the D&D multiverse. Every single one of them believes themselves to be a noble, which means their actual royal lineages are a complete mess. They're selfish at best, and at worst, tyrannical. As for their ability score increase, they get a plus one to wisdom, which makes them really good for something like a cleric, a ranger, or a druid. And they also get acid resistance. Why they don't get cold resistance, I will never know. Acid doesn't really come up that much, but when it does, you'll be glad you have it. You also have a swim speed of 30 feet and are amphibious, meaning that you're able to breathe on land and underwater. Both of these abilities heavily depend on what type of campaign you're gonna be a part of, but if you know you're gonna be near a lot of water sources, these will definitely come in handy. You also have Call to Wave, meaning that at third level, once per long rest, you're able to cast the Create or Destroy Water spell as a second level spell. Now let's end this video with some Genasi builds. As you can see, they're pretty flexible from their sub-race feature, and there's no real right or wrong way to do this, but I do think that these suggestions are some good starting points if you're not sure where to go from here. First is the Stealth Rock Paladin. It's strange that Earth Genasi gain Pass Without a Trace as their racial spell, but you can take advantage of this. Earth Genasi work really well stat-wise as paladins, and the idea of a fully armored Stealth Rock is both terrifying and hilarious to me. And then we have the Muscle Wizard of Fire. Constitution and Intelligence are a rare combination in this game, and they're exactly what the Muscle Wizard build is looking for. You're looking to wade into combat as a wizard with a lot of powerful buffs and melee-focused abilities. It can be a scary build, but when done correctly, a Fire Genasi is an absolute great pick for this sort of thing. So as you can see, playing a Genasi is about as close as you'll get to playing an Elemental without any homebrew involved, and I highly recommend doing so if any of this sounded even remotely interesting to you. If you have any ideas for a Genasi character, I'd love to hear them down in the comments. I never see any of them that are even remotely the same, unless they're just trying to rip off Robin Williams' genie from Aladdin, of course. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Be sure to like and subscribe. We put out new videos like this every week. My name is Patrick Ferguson with Skull Splitter Dice, and until next time, farewell. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so you never miss out.